Hi, I'm Dr. Adeline Tang from University Malaysia Sabah. Today, I'm going to present a unit for the course Fundamentals of Entrepreneurial Acculturation. The unit that I'm going to explain today is Unit 3, Business Opportunity. Let's look at the learning outcome. First, you have to recognize the situations that might contribute to business opportunities. We must learn what are the environment factors that might contribute to business opportunity. We need to identify which business opportunity is the best for our organization, our business, and evaluate and choosing the best one. And as well as to understand how to create a business from that opportunity. How are we going to make use of the opportunity to improve our business, our sales, our marketing, and so on. Right. So first, you must understand the term opportunity. Opportunity is a favorable set of circumstances that create a need for either new product, service, or even a business idea. So opportunity provides you the ways of the, the opportunity to improve your business, to reduce the weakness of the business, and to earn better income, better outcome. So let's look at the business opportunity. For example, when there are a need for cheaper travel, um, there is a need for affordable ticket, a ticket, then Air Asia came in. All right, Air Asia take the opportunity to provide for a cheaper, affordable ticket to the customers to travel. Same thing, when customers are facing a very busy schedule, for example, students very busy with their study, and working adults, they have to work up to maybe 10 hours per day, very busy with their work, so they need food and or drinks delivered to their place. So Food Panda come in at the uh, in this opportunity to provide the service to the customers. Same thing. How about what we are facing now? We are facing the COVID nineteen pandemic. So what are the opportunity? Okay, and some of the companies are facing problems now. They they are facing drop of sales. They are facing uh, no customers. For example, airlines. They don't have, uh, they cannot fly now at the moment because of the current rules and regulation. So what can the company do? For example, let's look at this one. All right, let's look at Thai Airways. What they are doing, actually, they have started to sell street food, street food, food to people. Okay, just next to the street to everybody. So what we can see is this is a way to reduce the the costs of uh, loss they are facing, and at the same time allow their workers to continue to work under under this pandemic. So it will be a a way to solve the problems facing by the business. Of course, many other companies are doing similar things for example we can see some local supermarkets now they start to uh, provide delivery service if we buy up to let's say 100 ringgit they will start to deliver to our house with no extra charges so this is what people are changing the companies are changing when the pandemic comes this is what happened to the environment so we have to change when there is a change in the environment next we are going to see how to identify the business opportunity. First, they look at here. There are three ways, three ways to identify an opportunity. First, observing the trends by observing politics, what happened in the politics, economic, social, or technology trend. You can observe what happened and then you find a ways to to solve either the problems or take advantage of the opportunity. Second is to solve the problems that people face today. And we can see many companies, they are using this method. For example, the example you can see of Food Panda, they are solving the problem of customers. Okay, And the third method is finding a gap or a gap or gaps in the marketplace where 
Gap refers to a small market segment. When there is a small market segment and this market segment might not have a big company willing to sell. So a smaller company is willing to sell, willing to sell in this marketplace. Let's look at the trend first. Look at the first wave first. Huh? The first approach is to observe the trend. For example, in terms of politics, we have to know what are the changes in the politics? What are the new laws and regulations? For example, during this pandemic time, we have the SOP. And one of the rules of SOP is to check the temperature of customers before allowing them to enter. So it comes with opportunity for people who are selling the body trim temperature measurement kind of things. All right. So same thing. Uh, when there is SOP, then we have to companies that selling tools or face protection things to the companies, right? And for economy, we can see if there is a changes in the economy, the customers income improve or getting worse. There is opportunity there. Same thing with social. Social, we can look at it in terms of the social changes cultural changes, even now the pandemic can be a big influence on our social factors. So how this influence or provide us with the opportunity, we have to think about it. When people, many people have to stay at home, all right, when they cannot go out for entertainment, what opportunity provided for companies that provide entertainment? These are the opportunity for them. Same thing. When we have new technology, especially when we have new media or new what you call social platform, then how are we going to use this social platform, social platform as our opportunity, right? So we have to identify what are the opportunity and then what are the difference between available and not available or possible. Then we provide what the, the requirement. Okay, we provide them with new products, new service. When we observe the trend, remember I mentioned about the tax. We also always bear in mind we have to obey the rule. Even though you 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 can do something, but you always obey the rule. So that is the first thing we have to look at politics. And then economy. Economy affects the income of customers. So we have to always bear in mind. For example, for KFC, they are referring to uh, law and middle income group. Okay, they are targeting mostly law and middle income group, but they are also available for high income group, right? But for P Pizza Hut, they they also have the similar strategy, but they are more to middle and high income group. So each company should know whether their product is to the low mid income group or to the high income group, and then they choose what they sh should offer right or the, what should they what are the business idea they can come up with this for this group of customers next for example social factor when they are a high income group when they are people have busy people when we have smartphone in our hand then what can we do what are the opportunity available and then same thing with technology technology provide many different platforms for us to do our business now. So it's very useful for us to do our business, uh, easier for us to do business such as grab delivery, okay, uh, uh, or servicing, transport services, and so on. So these are the trends by the technology and it really helped the company to provide new services, new product. And then, the second approach I just mentioned to solve the problems of the customers. So for the second approach, we have to identify or we have to see what are the problems. For example, now people are facing problems due to the pandemic. What product or what services can we provide besides food delivery, for example? All right? What services can we provide? Maybe we can provide some online consultancy for certain people who, who feel sad, depressed, anxiety. So maybe online, online consultancy for some companies. Now even pharmacies, they are starting to do online 
consultancy, online consultancy, consultancy by the pharmacies. So they yeah, ask you what are your problems. Then they recommend you what kind of vitamins you take or what kind of uh, products you can get from the pharmacies. After the consultation, then they will deliver the medicines or the product supplements to you with uh, delivery charges. So it reflects uh, the changes. When we, we try to solve the problems of customers, it also provides us with the opportunity to sell through the observing. And the third, finding the gaps in the marketplace. So when we find a gap, it means that we, we look at a specific small group of customers to sell our product. For example, there is a less vegetarian restaurant in KK, especially in Kingfisher, for example. But there are small group of customers who are vegetarian. So even though this group of customers are very small, they are still a restaurant, vegetarian restaurant, or shops that selling vegetarian in a certain area, such as in Kingfisher, right? So this is what we call finding a gaps. Find a small group of customers that we focus on selling the products to them. And many times, uh, most of the times, they are willing to pay for that special service or special product. And procedure. Second, we look at the procedures to create the business opportunity now. So the first thing is we have to identify our ideas, right? We have to know what are our ideas. We might have few ideas in hand that we do not know which to choose. So we have to validate our ideas and look at the customer segments. Who are the customers that we can sell to them? And at the same time, we also check our capital and budget, whether we have enough money, capital, okay? Capital to provide that services, whether we have the abilities. Now we talk, not only capital, we talk about our abilities, our skills, our knowledge to provide the product and how much budget we are willing to, to come up with to provide that product. And then we must uh, budget the cost of the product and services by creating the products. You know how much is the cost, how much is the, uh, the profit we can earn and so on. Then only we plan for the marketing mix. The four P's here, marketing mix, start with product, price, promotion, and place. This is the marketing, marketing mix. So let's look at the first one. For the ideas, we, we can come up with ideas to either to solve problems or to add value. There are many ways to, to generate idea, but like what we can see here just now, when there is a problem in the environment, how can we solve it? Okay, when there is a gap in the market, how can we add values to our product to sell to this small group of customers? So we have to create ideas from the environment issue, the opportunity that we see. So the product available in the market might not fulfill the demand or preference of customers due to low quality, poor performance, not user-friendly and so on. So that's why provide you with opportunity to create a new product or new ideas. Provide you with new ideas. And customers also require a product that can solve their problems. Remember now, I keep on saying, solve their problems. So this product can help to reduce the customer's problem, speed up their work, making them more efficient. For example, they're looking for software to solve problems, laptop, and so on. Okay, so these are the two very important points we have to think when we try to generate the ideas. After we have the idea, then now we have to validate the idea. We have to confirm whether the business ideas are valid or not before we even launch the business. Now, you have to look at the uh, ideas in even more details. You have to really analyze your idea. And then when you analyze, you need knowledge to analyze. So you need to do a survey on the customers to find out whether this idea is relevant, suitable for my customer. 
whether the idea meets the demand of the customer and whether the customer can afford to pay for that idea. So normally we will include in the survey form, we want to know the age of the uh, participants, gender, email. All this information is very important for us to understand our customer better, especially preference and income level. We ask this question, we want to check whether the respondent can pay for our products or not. Okay, we, and at the same thing, we ask for feedback for the products. We uh, go from the survey. Okay, so at the same time, we must know who are the customers we want to choose from. We might choose customers from a certain age group, for example, using demography. This market segmentation method, there are four different factors. Normally, business will choose either one only. We are not taking all the four together to choose as a variable to choose. We normally take one factor to choose. For example, um, I might choose a group of uh, young adult ladies, for example, I use demography, young adult ladies, when I want to sell the ideas of a beautiful t-shirt for ladies, young adults. So I'll choose demography, I choose the age, young adult, uh, teenagers, young adult, and female. For example, I want to, to sell my beautiful t-shirt. And for different companies, they might have different target. For example, we look at uh, cars, okay, cars, expensive cars. Then they are not looking at age, gender, that much. They are focusing more on income. They look at customer with this income group, these are my customer that they want this type of product. So what do they want? Then only they analyze in more detail what do they want. Or you can even say, I want to sell to groups of customers near my hometown. For example, your business practical project, you need to do a project of selling to local companies, or oh, sorry, local customers. So location will be your segmentation, main factor. So you say, my market segmentation factor, main factor is the area nearby my house. I'm staying in, let's say I'm staying in KK at the moment. So customers located in KK is my main customers. Then only you try to see within this location who you can sell to. Same thing with psychology, either look at the values or lifestyle to de determine which group of customers. So again, for market segmentation, you only look at one of the factor, not all the four factors, to determine one factor to determine your which group of customers you want to sell to. Next, we look at the capital and budget. After we decide who are the customers, what product ideas I have already. Now I want to see whether I have the capital to start up the companies or whether my company can come up, if I already have a company, whether my company can come up with a budget to provide a new product or services. And then whether the product that provided by the service, uh, the pro product provided by my business suitable for the customers. So after segmentation process, start a locate the capital into the operation. Here we have, we can even come out with a sample product. The purpose of coming out to of a sample product is to estimate the expenses of the product or services. We need to estimate how much we have to pay for to, to provide that product. For example, if I need to make a, a cake, I need to know how, what are the materials I need to put into the cake. I need to know the cost of each materials. So when, if I don't do it, if I have no experience of preparing it, I don't know how much, and how many eggs I need to put in, how many, uh, uh, how much sugar and other flavor, uh, flour, flavor I need to put in. So I don't know how to do it. If you never do, then you have to prepare a sample products to estimate your cost. This is very important. 
And when you estimate your cost, make sure you always estimate with extra cost came in because you, you have to budget that the price of sugar might increase in the near future. The price of, uh, if I put in cheese, the price, price of cheese might put in in the near, near future. Then only I start to, with, with all the objective calculations of uh, budget, cost, all those things, I start to create a product that I can use to sell, okay, with that ideas. So, we already go through, remember, we already go through a few steps already with the ideas, we validate the ideas, we look at the common customer segmentation, then we look at our budget and capital before we come to really create a product or a service for sale. So product, there are many types of product. Service, they might be delivery service, dropship, and other services. And then always bear in mind, when you are preparing the product for sales, always bear in mind you can, you have to prepare, um, you have to set a markup. Markup is the ratio between cost and price. So it's a ratio between cost and price. Let's say the cost of my beverage is uh, one ringgit. So I mark up by 30%. This is example. It's uh, up to you to decide how much is your mark up. Let's say this company decide 30%. I decide 30% for my drinks. So my the cost of my drink is one ringgit. I mark up by 30%. So I will sell it by one ringgit. 30 cent, 130 cent. So it means that out of this 30 cent, I still have to pay other costs, such as maybe my labor costs, other costs, my promotion costs, I'm, and maybe also my cost of a uh, rental. I, when I rent a store, I try to sell in the store, these are the costs that I have to pay. And for example, for food, I, have a I can have a different markup percent, for food, okay. Let's say for food, my my uh the nasi lemak special that I made is uh, two ringgit, and I want to mark up forty percent, so it's eighty cents, eighty cents. So I will sell at two ringgit eighty cents. Let's say so my cost, I have to pay the the cost of rice, ikan bilis, ayam, dulu dan sebagainya. All these are with two ringgit. And the extra 80 cents is to pay other costs like promotion and other costs. So always remember the markup seems very high, but in the markup, you have to pay some other costs. So at the end of the day, your profit might be only 10, 20% only. It might not be high. Markup is just the, the difference between cost and price. So this is the example, if you can have a look in detail. All right, this is another example of marking up. All right, so when you do your product costing, remember you have to calculate all the costs. For example, uh, if you want to make a Milo ice, then what should you con include? Sugar, Milo, water, ice, uh, sugar, water, cup, and all those, and then each one of it you have to include in the cost. Don't say uh, the ice, just a scoop. I don't know how much to, to cost. Still, you need to cost it, to give it a cost. Let's say my ice is 10 cents. You always try to mark up higher. Always try to mark up higher. For example, the sugar water, 3 cents. Okay, for me, I think that the sugar water. Three cent is maybe too low. I need to mark it up. All right. So this is very important. I'll always try to budget up the cost and try to mark higher. Okay. The cost to mark the cost higher. Keep it high so that you you can pay for if you have to always pay in mind the cost of products might increase in the near future. So you don't say you keep the cost low. You always Bear in mind the cost might be high, so you have to always keep the cost high. And then this labor cost is a special labor cost to prepare this drink only. So I might put it 30 cents. It might be higher. It really depends on your company. 
all right the first costing so this is the example and then by here you can calculate the cost per unit of course just now it's away all right so after you calculate the cost per unit then you have to know how to calculate the break even analysis this break even analysis i will explain in more detail in the chapter finance again so just to let you know first break even analysis is calculated to identify the minimum sales amount you need to pay to cover the cost so the minimum products to sell is to avoid you facing any loss for example i'm using there are two ways to do this break even analysis first method is using a formula a formula calculation second method is using a graph a diagram like this a graph like this to calculate it i will recommend you to use a calculation so your fixed cost is the cost you have to pay that is fixed for a certain period for example this month i need to run a store and the cost of the store let's say is 200 ringgit for one month i ran a store and if uh, for this whole month i have to pay 200 ringgit even though i'm not doing business if i have a good sales also the 200 ringgit remain the same same 200 ringgit will not change even though i don't sell things even though i sell many things so the this cost i call it fixed cost is a rental and then at the same time for break even point uh you need to have the price of the product price of the product is let's say just now the price i want to sell my my law is one ringgit 80 cent uh, sorry one ringgit 30 cent just now yeah one ringgit 30 cent my price and then i already calculate my cost my variable cost that is cost for my law cost for sugar cost for ice and cost for other things is one ringgit so to calculate the fixed cost i need to take the fixed cost divide by price minus my variable cost so let's say my fixed cost is 200 ringgit my price is one ringgit minus my variable cost is uh, uh my price is one ringgit 30 cent minus my variable cost is one uh, one ringgit so here i will get 30 cent so it's 200 divided by 30 cent then i will get a quantity and this quantity will be the quantity that i must sell if i sell my law eyes only i must sell to avoid i'm making loss so sometimes if you mark up your profit margin low then you have to sell more quantities to cover your costs your fixed costs especially All right so this is break even analysis this is the example i will keep it simple here already oops sorry yeah let's look at the this is another example let's say the company fixed cost is this and given the price is 12 ringgit the variable cost is 3 ringgit after divide it you will get 2778 units so this is the break even unit that a company must sell let's say this company is selling titanium bottles and for this company is a big company you can see the total cost is so high fixed cost is so high so they need to sell a high quantity it means that Look at this example the higher your fixed cost your cost of rental and other things the higher the quantity you need to sell of course for big companies selling 2000 units of more than 2700 units of bottles is not a big amount for a big company 